Today I'm going to be replacing the frame with the one from Stuart Andrews, which is much beefier than the stock tag frame. Welcome to another episode. Today I'm going to be installing a frame that I got from Stuart Andrews. I learned about him on the tag uh, Facebook group and there's a link to the post about his upgrade down below in the links. His frame is a lot uh, heavier. It's larger in the, the Y and the Z, and it's also a lot beefier. So people really like it because you can apparently do more aggressive cuts with it. But the thing that I really liked about it is that it gives more headroom in the Y and the Z because I really needed some extra space. I mean, for example, my vise would typically run into the column before I ran out of uh, movement in the Y axis. He has holes so that you can put the Y and the Z in several different locations. I experimented with it and I left that out of the, the video because I spent quite a bit of time trying different positions. But in the event, in the end, uh, I'm probably going to move it again in the future after I uh, mill down some spacers that will give me another three quarter inch to the travel. So the stock Y travel on the take is five and a half inches and with the extensions I'll be able to get about uh, six and a quarter inches which I believe is the same travel as on the the Tormach uh, 440. Anyway let's head to the shop and uh, I'll install the frame. First I needed to disconnect the stepper motors and also uh, the electrical. Then uh, after I took the lights off and a few other things I was able to uh, lift up the enclosure and uh, remove it. It's open on the top and the bottom, so it's easy to do that. Next, I need to remove the screws uh, for the motor and then the uh, the cover over the, the Z. And then there are a number of screws to remove the Z itself. There's some on the top and then some on the bottom, so I had to move the Y to uh, get access to the ones on the bottom. And then it just uh, uh, once all the screws are out, it just uh, pulls straight off, and the screws are to the either side of the ball screw. The y-axis uh, also has a set of screws, and again you have to move the y-axis uh, back and forth to be able to pull the screws out. Once you do that, it just comes right off. Okay, I'm going to go uh, clean things up, and then uh, we'll be back uh, with the new frame. Here's the box that I got from Stuart. Let's see what's inside. Okay, let's see what we have here. This looks like the base. That's certainly a beautiful base. One thing I'm noticing is that there is a little bit of rust on here already, so I think I'll spray it with some WD-40. Uh, let me go out and get that and I'll be back. Anyway, okay, just for uh, comparison, There's the old and the new, so you can see it's uh, quite a bit larger. Really looking forward to that. Okay. Yeah, this whole frame is a whole lot beefier than the other one. Uh, this is made out of tube, just like the other one, but it's made out of uh, thicker tube. Uh, it has some ribs on the side to give it additional strength. And uh, it's got a, a much thicker base, uh, so all in all, should be very nice. Now what I'm going to do is, is assemble these two. Mm -hmm. 
I'm having a little bit of a problem with the, uh, the screw in the back. I'm not going in, so I'm going to try taking these out and uh, see how that goes. I finally figured out the problem, which is there's a washer right here, and the washer was catching on this lip, so it would not come all the way over. If I unscrew this a little bit and lift this washer, you can see now it comes all the way over. So it was this washer that was in the way, and I just have to lift that up. Now I can continue assembling and uh, <coughs> get this frame uh, back up and running. Now that I figured out the issue, you can see the four screws go in quite easily. Uh, just have to uh, put them in finger tight and then use the wrench to uh, put them in place. And I uh, kind of bumped it into position so that I, it was nicely lined up between the top and the bottom. Okay, anyway, so there you can see the old frame and the new frame and just how different they are in size. This thing is a beast. Okay, let me put this aside and... Uh... I started by reinstalling the Y. There are the screws that I put in the front and then I had to crank it to get to the back just as before. Put the screws in the back and then tighten on the screws and uh, the Y is in place. Then I put the, the Z column back on. Uh, again, there are a number of different positions you can put it in, and um, I'm just showing you trying it in one position. I did try it in some other positions. Again, there are screws on the top and the bottom, and you just have to put them all in and take your time, and it comes out great. So I thought uh, that I had uh, purchased a long time ago an extension. Uh, this is a uh, three-quarter inch extension that will pull this out a little bit more and uh, therefore will allow a little bit more Y travel this way. Uh, which means that I can actually have the whole Y assembly back this way. So I'm going to go in and install those and uh, then come back uh, and then redo the Y. You can see uh, this doesn't actually fit on there because this frame is longer than the other frame. Here I'm using the ProTram from Edge Technologies to see how the left and the right side uh, match. This is five inches apart and it's hard to see the dials but they're off by about 10,000 so the right side is different from the left side. So I'm going to rock it back and forth and try to figure out and what I discovered is that I need to put a little bit more of something underneath the, the left side. I have some paper. I should use metal shims. I don't have any so I just cut them into strips, three of them, and I'm going to put them under the left side and then see how that does. After some more tweaking I got it to within less than a thousandths uh, from front to back which is three inches. And then if I look at the side, you can see it's pretty much dead on. I have the machine back in its can, uh, case. Uh, basically, let me pan around. So you can see I made a uh, cabinet that's out of pieces of wood. It's basically uh, one by ones, uh, which you can see back here, with some thin uh, quarter inch uh, sheet on the front and the back and the sides. And, uh, it's open on the top and open on the bottom, so it's just sitting on the table. One thing I had to do with the new frame is I had to turn this sideways so that the bed goes uh, diagonally from corner to corner because with the new frame it wouldn't fit in here. And uh, this just barely fits in here. Uh, I'm going to be putting on a three-quarter inch extension here and here once I mill them down so they'll fit again. And um, I should have enough room even when I do that. Uh, this also has a couple uh, doors uh, which you know, keep the, the chips in but allow me to see what's going on. Here's a better view of the, the case that you can see I made. Again, you can see it's made out of wood, so it didn't take me very long at all to make this and it was uh, very inexpensive. I don't remember how much it cost, but certainly uh, I think it was less than $100. And it, worked, it has worked pretty well except for, as I say, uh, the fact that there's no top on it. Now that I've been more aggressive with milling, allows the chips to escape the top. 
Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to hear about uh, new episodes in the future. If you do subscribe, make sure you uh, click the bell next to the subscribe button so that you're notified of uh, new videos. I've been averaging a new video every two to three weeks. Um, it takes me longer to do these things when I'm uh, recording videos. Anyway, see you next time and thanks for watching. Thank you.